I purchased this Mighty Byte inside diameter clamp. Now what? For a project that I won't be able to show until November, I needed some inside diameter clamps because I need to hold the part, which is about this large, on an inside diameter while I mill everything around the outside. And I had never used inside diameter clamps before, so I had to learn a few things. They're actually really easy to use, but sometimes the fear of not knowing what you have to do can keep you, well, me, from doing something for a while. All you have to do is mount this to a fixture so that it's aligned, and then the clamp area itself is designed to be milled to the correct diameter and depth, and then you put your part on it and expand it. So these come in different sizes that, uh, not very many different sizes, that vary by quite a bit because it's intended for you to mill away some of the material to get the exact uh, diameter or shape that you need. So let me head to the computer and show you more about that. I started by downloading the 3D model for this inside diameter clamp and that makes it a lot easier to create a fixture. This is made out of two different pieces. If we look at the screw you can see that it has a conical shape and on the inside of the clamp there is a corresponding conical shape. So as you screw it down it's going to expand these and push these outward. There's no thread on the bottom here, so you need a thread in the fixture itself. I wanted to mill this to be smaller because the part that I have is much smaller diameter. And these are made to be milled to the size that you need. In addition to making it a smaller diameter, I'm also using this to register to a specific depth so that I get repeatability each time. There's also a locating feature on the part which goes into this little notch here. So fast forwarding, there's the jig itself which is just a piece of 3 inch by 3 inch by 1 half inch thick aluminum that has three holes drilled and tapped and then this hole drilled, well actually bored with an end mill and then tapped. And this is what will pull down the screw, the screw here, to expand this out. The first step, as usual, is to deck off the back and then make sure that the width is exactly what I want. I then like to mark the uh, back left side so when I turn it over after deburring it, I can ensure that I put it into the exact same orientation in the vise. After a quick deburr, it's back in the vise, and then I hold it down firmly while I tighten the vise to get it pretty close to all the way down. But it won't be all the way down, so I have to hammer it down and then make sure that the parallels underneath are tight. Once they're both tight, then I know it's uh, down and flat. After this, this, it's a matter of using the hymer to pick up the back left corner again, and then I can start milling the top side. I'm using a 3 8 inch flat end mill to create the pocket for the inside diameter clamp. And I'm not being aggressive at all at milling. There's no reason to, this is not something that's production, so I don't have to do it very quickly. This is the part I really love, which is, you know, spotting. For some reason, that never gets old, followed by drilling the holes. And of course, also watching the tool changer is always fun. Boring the hole for the 5 8 11th bolt uh, to the top in size. And then a chamfer around all the holes. Uh, for the screw holes, I want to make the chamfer large enough to help start the tap. And then on the outside here, I just want a light chamfer. I'm rigid tapping the 1032 holes, but you'll notice that it stopped. And the reason it stopped is because I used the wrong size tap. 
I used a foam tap and the hole was not large enough for that. I meant to use a spiral flute tap. I got this uh, at the Bar Z Summer Bash. And so this is my first time trying anchor lube on uh, a tap like this. And we'll see how it works. Okay, now I have uh, three holes to tap. I actually drilled four holes because I broke off a tap here. I was trying to do uh, rigid tapping, but I had the wrong tap in here and it just broke off. So I'm going to do these three holes instead. I absolutely love spiral flute taps because you can just keep turning in the same direction. You don't have to back up to break chips. This is the uh, fixture to hold the inside diameter clamp. So I should be able to just assemble this now. And let's see. So those are the three tapped holes. So that means I can put these screws in there. And let me figure out what size this is. One of the things I was curious about, which I've confirmed, is that once these, these are tightened, that'll re remove the rotational constraint as well. And so this will be very firmly in place. It's not going to move at all, which is exactly what I want. And I also have a specific corner. This was the zero point corner, and then I turned it over and this became the new zero corner. So I have a finished surface there and there, and then this is the unfinished surface here, which doesn't matter. But what that means is I can use this to pick up uh, zero, zero each time. So. That's the way I want it. And then here's the expanding uh, screw, which will screw into the aluminum fixture, like so. I don't have a wrench large enough, so I'm gonna have to get a larger wrench uh, before I can tighten that down all the way. So the idea is uh, to expand this. Right now this is loose by about three thousandths of an inch before machining it. So if I measure this right now, it's uh, about 1.04 inches. So that means I need it to be 1.0, So I'll turn this a little bit, see how much that uh, changes it. Okay, so I'll crank crank it a little bit more. See how much that moved it. Okay, it takes a little bit more to uh, expand it than I realized. I might have to put this into a vise to do that. Okay, that's, there we go. That'll do. That, I, I'd say that's close enough. So the next thing that uh, you're supposed to do is to put this nut, which comes with it, on the back, the back, tighten that down. And then I'm going to put this in the mill and mill out the part that uh, needs to be smaller in diameter so that it'll hold the part on the inside diameter. I didn't check the clearance on the hammer and discovered after the fact that I had to rotate it slightly so that when I picked up the zero point, it wouldn't hit 
the inside diameter fixture at South. Fortunately, I just barely have enough room. I'm taking pretty conservative cuts on this, just 25 thousandths of an inch step over and 71 thousandths of an inch deep so that I don't uh, push it out of alignment or anything like that. And this went uh, really well. Using a 1 fourth inch diameter for flute and mill. This 1 32nd inch diameter end mill, flat end mill, is making quick work cutting the slot at 26,000 RPM. I made uh, two out of the three fixtures and they turned out uh, very nicely. And one thing I want to mention is that uh, the part is sitting up uh, pretty high and it's only supported by the inside diameter clamp. So one of the questions, of course, is will that be rigid enough? And I can say it was absolutely rigid enough. I have used these, both of the fixtures, and I milled the part. And again, I won't be able to show it until November. And it turned out perfectly. So I'm really enthusiastic about uh, using these inside diameter clamps. They're not cheap. They, I think they were about $50 each, but they do a great job. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and thanks for watching.